We've explored just about every angle in the wake of last week's blowout loss when it comes to vote no versus vote yes on the uh, stadiums here in Jackson County. But there's one angle that I really haven't given a ton of consideration to that actually came in the uh, words of the Kansas City Star. Now, I'm not going to give them credit for it because it wasn't them. It was a letter to the editor. Of course, right? It came in the form of a letter to the editor. They took multiple letters to the editor last week in the wake of um, the blowout loss for vote out win for vote no. And this one uh, really stood out to me. So I want to share it with you here on a Tuesday morning. Hope your morning's off to a, a great start. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully uh, you didn't stare straight into the sun yesterday. And frankly, I hope you didn't waste your time with the whole eclipse thing. But anyway, we'll get to that later in the hour. Uh, Here's the letter to the editor from uh, Peter Krull. And this is actually one of the better letter to the editors that we've ever seen in the Kansas City Star. All of them were actually pretty good. Because this issue was not one of the more insane issues the Kansas City Star likes to cover. Where they talk about how much they hate the cops and everything else. So uh, this letter to the editor reads here from Peter Krull. Friday morning I read that owner John Sherman's wife is ready to pack up the Royals and the Chiefs and move anywhere as long as it's not here, according to a Facebook post that she shared. This is, of course, the Facebook post that went viral here locally from John Sherman's wife after the vote yes went down in flames, basically saying they're done in Jackson County. Now, I don't believe that. I think that was an emotional social media post from someone who's been invested for a very long time. Uh, Money will talk, and I don't think Jackson County is done. But anyway, neither here nor there. That's how this letter began. Peter writes here, her reasoning is that after three Chiefs Super Bowl wins, we owe the team owners hundreds of millions of dollars to stay and make more money than they'll ever need. I would say that after decades of supporting our beloved teams through the hard times, we are the best fans an owner could possibly want, setting the decibel record at Arrowhead Stadium and more. You could say, writes this guy Peter Krull, That we were owed the Super Bowl and the World Series wins. I'd suggest that instead of threatening the city and fans to please try again. We love our teams. And I think that we've shown that for the last 60 years. Now, you know, we've thought of and we've heard from you and we've talked about every angle imaginable. But I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. Where it's like, wait. We supported you through all these years, and they weren't all the last five for the Chiefs. They weren't all 2014 and 2015 for the Royals. It was 1983 and 1984. When John was sitting in Arrowhead Stadium with 10,000 of his closest friends. I could leave my house and make it in 30 minutes. (laughs) No traffic. (laughs) The heyday. Many of you, including John, remember it quite well. So to think about it from that perspective... And to say, well, we've given you these wins. The fan, like Peter is writing here in this letter to the editor, can say, yes, and we supported you for decades with our money and our time when you stunk up the joint. And for the Royals, by the way, that does include in part the last (laughs) handful of years. (laughs) The preceding season. Yeah, 106 losses. Yep. So to put it in that prism is something that I hadn't really thought of yet and put together and said to myself, gosh, we knew and we talked a lot about how when the teams broke out the card of we might leave, it pissed off a lot of people. And a lot of people who were on the fence, you called this show and you said, you know what? I was kind of like, maybe yes, maybe no, but that's ridiculous. You're going to threaten me for my money with all that we've done for you? We talked a lot about that angle. But the notion that, hey, we supported you guys through a lot of lean years. You brought us the Super Bowl. We appreciate it. But the fact that we owe you more of our money after you brought us the best fans in the world, we would argue, what we have earned through our support through lean years, come on now. It's an excellent point. It's another one of the missteps that when you look back and you do the postmortem in part on last Tuesday should be getting more attention 
than it did leading up to the vote, which was this notion of you owe us, you the taxpayer owe us. There are the socioeconomic issues that I've covered ad nauseum, which I believe was the biggest driver of this. The socioeconomic issues, the way the working man and woman doesn't feel like they can even take their family to a game right now, football or baseball. The way the property tax issue played out in this town, in this county, which was an utter disaster. And then there were the micro issues of the last few weeks where the stadium was located, the way it was rolled out, the way the teams handled things down the home stretch. That's the micro. The macro and the micro are two different things. And then there's this, which I would include as part of the macro. The general sentiment of we've been there for you guys. And now the minute we say, well, can we at least learn a little bit more about what our tax monies are going to be used for? Can we at least, you know, get a little more transparency than what you guys have preached? Oh, yeah? You want more transparency? We're out of here. Yes, OBs. Give us your money, damn it. Turned off a lot of people. They'll recover. In sports, it's all about winning. Winning cures a lot of things. How many people are juiced about the Royals right now? right, after their sweep over the weekend of the White Sox. Sports is all about winning. That's all that matters. If you win, you'll be beloved. But I'll tell you right now, for these teams going back to the table, um, the best thing they can do at this point when it comes to this negotiation, lay low, sit back, let some time pass, and hopefully go back to the drawing board a little bit and realize what needs to be done. And that is a better plan. That is more transparency, actual transparency, not just talking about it. And then through the process, hopefully coming to a conclusion that works for the teams, that works for the Jackson County legislature, and then also works for the taxpayer. That's what's going to matter here. And could Kansas swoop in? Yeah. I mean, yesterday we talked to um, Sean Tarwater. He's the supposed expert, is what I was told, on these star bonds in Kansas. Could they use those for the teams? Yes. But I've heard from a lot of Republicans in Topeka who say they would not be in favor of that right now. They don't want to pit their own taxpayer against the taxpayer in Missouri on behalf of the teams. And as that populist sentiment continues to grow, not just in Missouri and Kansas, but around the country, Uh, It's not going to be as easy as the teams think it's going to be. So their best bet, I still think, is for the Chiefs to certainly go back to the drawing board with Jackson County. And then for the Royals, I do think you look up north. You go back to Clay County. You go back to North Kansas City. You look at your options. But you also keep that line of communication open with Jackson County. That's what you do.